Okay, this is going to be a monitor fix it video. I'm going to attempt to try to fix this D9200 monitor. It's, I don't know, I'm like 16 years old. Bought it brand new. Past couple months, it's been having a tiny little black flash for a microsecond. And it only does it like once or twice an hour. I've tried to get it on camera, but I've never been able to be lucky enough to do it. And being that this monitor is 16 years old, it's probably a good idea just to like check it over, pull the chassis out and check all the capacitors and everything. This is what I used to discharge the monitor. I've got a long piece of wire. The bare copper is around a flathead screwdriver on this end. And I got a bare piece of wire right there. The monitor is off and unplugged. I insert this wire, the bare copper, into a hole in the chassis and then I take this part I like to wear a rubber glove just because how a wire has vinyl insulation the glove might protect me from a shock and the one important part is to always put your left hand in your pocket I see people like tight grabbing this while they do this and you don't want to do that because it creates a circuit through your heart from one hand to the other and you don't want to do that so always use just one hand and then I'll take the flathead screwdriver and slide it behind the suction cup of the anode till I feel it hit the metal and now it should be discharged then I carefully peel back the suction cup so I can identify where the prongs are. And then I reinsert it right on top of the flat part of the prong. There, it just popped out one half. And I'm pretty sure it's released. There it is. There's two little prongs that fit inside the hole. So I discharged the monitor. Then I removed the neck board off of the neck. Then I undo these four bolts, two here and two here. And this one, the whole chassis was able to swing out. This is a different revision from my other one. I guess the heat sinks aren't as tall, so it was able to come out without hitting the neck. Okay, I just did a thorough visual inspection, looked over every single component, looked for something that was out of place, all that looked good. I then tested every single capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, my ESR meter, and they're all good. Every single one is reading perfect. And then I closely inspect all the solder joints, look for cracks. I use three times magnification reading glasses, and also this little magnifying glass. Look for little cracks all over the back of the board. On the back of the neck board, I found one capacitor that had kind of a dodgy looking solder joint. Probably the worst thing is the back of the VGA board. These pins all had a bunch of little cracks. So I re-soldered them. So really, I think that was probably the problem. And after putting everything back together, really take your time and look over all the cables. Make sure you're not forgetting something. I was about to turn it back on and I forgot to put the anode back onto the monitor. I just turned it on. I hear it crackling. Windows boot up screen. 
Man, it's so stressful thinking you might break it just from pulling it out. So far so good. Let me test it over for a few hours and I'll come back. Okay, it's about two hours in and I haven't seen that little blink thing yet. I'm gonna really test this thing out. I'll wait like a week or two. Constant playing. See if it fixed. Okay, it's about a month and a half later. I've run the machine 11 times. Total of about 20 hours and I haven't seen that little black flash. So I'm assuming it's fixed. This just goes to show that you don't need to be an electronics repair expert to work on these things. There's like simple basic stuff like checking capacitors, crack solder joints, cable connections, and you can fix your arcade machine. Here's Spy Hunter. Notice I've got a custom made bezel artwork and the little flashing icons work. You can see the weapons van is flashing. Another one of my favorite games is Drag Race. It uses the four-way shifter and a 360 steering wheel. For two speed games, I use this side of the shifter for high and low. And it's got a potentiometer gas pedal. The Spy Hunter steering wheel is perfect to play all the analog steering wheel driving games. This is Paperboy.